Hi, my name is Cassidy Williams and I'm a software engineer and a developer evangelist at Clarify. And today I'm going to be talking to you about JavaScript. And this is going to be an introduction to JavaScript, so if you've ever touched JavaScript before, this might be a bit of a review. But if you've never touched it, this is going to start from the very beginning. So, um, a little bit about me. Like I said, I'm a software engineer and developer evangelist. So on one side of the equation, I'm coding, working on Clarify's products, and on the other side, I am going to hackathons, meetups, conferences, and helping people like you learn how to code. So you can find me on the internet, search Cassidy Williams, or uh, my Twitter handle is Cassidy, and um, you can ask me whatever you want. So let's get started. So what is JavaScript? JavaScript is the language of the web. It is the one thing that you can really build anything in. And when I say anything, I mean anything. You can build uh, scripts, web applications, mobile applications. You can uh, inject different ideas into different websites. There's so many options with JavaScript. There's actually a law called Atwood's Law, and it says any application that can be written in JavaScript will eventually be written in JavaScript. Whoa, it's so cool. So, uh, let's get started right away. So I want you to go to this website. Um, it's repl.it and click JavaScript. Um, and it's just a quick little demo that lets you kind of play with JavaScript as we're going. So, um, in this website, Riplet, I don't know, I don't, I'll call it that, um, just go ahead and type console.log hello world. And if you'll notice that there's quotes around hello world and there's a semicolon at the end. So I typed it right here, and then you can just hit enter. Or you can type run on the side. And if you'll notice, whoa, hello world is written. And that's magic. But um, that's only like a tiny slice of what we'll be talking about today. So basically everything in JavaScript is a statement. Um, and what statements do is they execute some kind of command to the browser. And um, I'm going to teach you a little bit on how to construct different statements and construct different things so that way you can put together really large programs with JavaScript. So um, I showed you console.log and that just prints something to the console. Now I'm going to talk to you about variables. Now um, variables let you save value, values Excuse me. Variables let you save values to, that you'll use for later. Um, you can use var to make a new variable. You name it, in this sample right here, ours is named x, and then you can use it later. And so, if I were to go to our demo right over here, I could do var x or var Cassidy equals, and then I can put anything in there. I'm just going to put hello world again. Type that out add a semicolon at the end. Every statement in JavaScript ends with a semicolon. And then I can do console.log. Again, console.log prints something to the console. And then I'm going to put in there our variable name, Cassidy. And so if I hit run, it's going to type hello world again. Whoa! And you can put anything you want in these variables. So let's just say I wanted to just type um, local hack day is awesome but then still name it as Cassidy, I can hit run and it still prints. And so basically variables are a place where you can store something and uh, variables can store all kinds of different things. Um, the short answer is variables can store anything. The long answer is variables can store a number, a string, a boolean, the value null, it can be undefined, functions, objects, so, so many different things. Um, and let's actually go through what each of those are. Um, so what the heck are these things? Numbers. Numbers, you've seen numbers before, I would hope. If you're looking at this and you haven't seen numbers before, you should go to school. Stay in school, kids. But anyway, numbers can be whole numbers or decimals in JavaScript. And so if you noticed, I had the var my age equals 23. Um, there you go. My age is 23. There you go. And you can also have, uh, for example, the value of pi, and you could do 3.14159263 and keep going and going and going. Um, and whole numbers or decimals. Pretty straightforward. You can also have strings. And uh, strings are wrapped in quotes and it's just any amount of text. And so we did hello world as our example. You could also have a variable named something else and have like your name in it. You can have um, fish, whatever you want. You can stick a string in quotes um, and then just have that saved in a variable. 
There's also Booleans. Um, Booleans are the values of true or false. And so if you notice, I have dog suck equals false and hackathon's rule equals true. There you go. Um, Booleans look a lot like strings, um, but they're not strings. Um, if you'll notice, they are, they don't have any quotes around them and it's just true and false. You can't have a Boolean that's, um, again, fish. You can't have a Boolean that's major league hacking. Your Booleans can only be true or false. And I'll explain, like, why those are important a little later. Then there's also null and undefined. Now, if you create a variable, but then you don't assign it anything, so you have var, this is not defined yet, as our very clever name, um, and then there's no equal sign, there's nothing that you're actually assigning to it, it's an undefined variable. Um, they just don't have a value yet, but you can assign it a value later. Um, on the other hand, there's null variables, and those are actually empty on purpose. They're explicitly empty, and they're defined to be empty. And so if you had var good pickup lines equals null, that means that the variable for good pickup lines is empty on purpose. Although that's a lie. There's some pretty good pickup lines out there. Um, there's a few other notes that you should know about variables. The names of variables can start with a dollar sign, an underscore, or a letter. Um, they cannot start with number names and or number values because uh, they just can't. That's the rule. But um, they can have numbers in the name. So if you wanted to have a variable called like num1 or something, that's totally fine if you have the word num and then the number one in there, but you can't have like one and then num because that'll really confuse JavaScript. It's one of those languages that you just do what you're told because it's JavaScript. But anyway, um, so they start with a letter, a dollar sign, or an underscore. They can consist of letters, numbers, dollar signs, and underscores. Um, they are case sensitive. That means that it does pay attention if things are lowercase and capital letters. So make sure that you include that. And then um, it's also best practice to use camel case for multiple word variable names. So if you noticed in my previous slide, I had this is not defined yet. You'll notice that all of those uh, beginning of words have capital letters um, and they're not separated by underscores or spaces or anything like that. It's best practice to use the camel case because that's just um, the standard for JavaScript. So variables can also define expressions. And expressions are a nice combination of different things. You've probably heard it in your math classes before. But basically, you can combine different things to make others. So let's just say I have right here this example, var name equals Cassidy. I have a greeting that combines the string hello and then also the variable name Cassidy. And so if you were just, just print greeting, it would do hello Cassidy, which is cool. Um, there's also uh, equations and numbers. So I have this var rank is three minus two, so that if you were to print out rank, it would be one. Um, I also have title that combines rank into a bigger string. So the number rank developer in the world and then um, I have formal greeting, which combines greeting and it combines title. And so if you were to put all of this together, and you can experiment with this now, um, it would print, hello, Cassidy, the number one developer in the world. Whoa, that was so nice. You can put your name too, it's fine. Um, let's actually mess with that a tiny bit over in the Replit website, whatever it is. So what you can do is do var name, and then you can put your name in there. Um, if you'll notice, I'm using single quotes instead of double quotes. You can do double quotes if you want, but it's one of those style things that it's probably best to use single quotes, so make sure you do that. So I'm going to do my name as Cassidy, and then I'm going to do a number variable. And so I'm going to do var, hmm, I'm going to do number of tasks. So uh, for my number of tasks, I'm going to have 10 for now. And then I'm going to do another variable called tasks done. And I'm going to do that as five because I finished five tasks, let's just say. Then um, what I want to do is print out saying uh, that whoever this name is, in this case Cassie, has completed uh, tasks done of number of tasks. So if I were to say um, var complete, Let's just say we're going to make that a string and we're going to do um, hello, a nice little greeting. And then notice how I'm going to put a plus sign in here. Hello plus name. 
And then notice I also put a space right in here after hello, because if you were to just include no space there, then the name would be pressed up right against that comma. And so you add the spaces so that way it's printed correctly and uh, not all squished. Um, so hello name, and then I'm going to add this exclamation point because they're super excited. And I'm going to say you have completed and add a little space there, number of, of tasks, then add another plus sign around there, and then add of, and then tasks done. So again, I'm putting plus signs around there because I'm concatenating the strings. I'm appending them to each other, adding them all together. Okay, now I'm going to finish this last part with tasks and add a semicolon. So this is kind of a long line, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Now I'm going to do console.log and then have it print complete. And so when I hit run, it says, hello, Cassidy, you've completed 10 of five tasks. Whoops, I just messed those up. So I'm just going to switch those around. You know, it happens. We're live coding, right? tasks done of number of tasks. Now we do it, you've completed five of ten tasks. So it's really easy to mix and match your different variables and kind of just put together nice pieces of information. Um, and you can do a lot with that information. And let's just say you have a nice big website and when someone logs in, you want to have a variable for their name when they actually put in their name uh, when they're logging in. That's super easy now because you know that there's a name right there and you can just assign it that variable. Um, you can also change variables. And so like once I've set the name Cassidy to uh, my name variable, um, what if I decided to change my name to Queen or something like that? You can easily do that. So but, um, in this example right here, I have var fish equals salmon and then, oh, I don't actually want salmon to be correct. I can do fish equals tuna and that would work. So if I wanted to do some code right over here, I can do var um, car equals Honda. And I have an awesome Honda, just kidding. I don't have a car, but let's pretend I do. But if I'm going to pretend I have a car, I'm not going to just give myself a Honda. No offense, Honda owners out there. I'm gonna go for a Ferrari. So I'm going to just assign car equals Ferrari. Now, because the car variable isn't new in this case, you don't have to include var again. Otherwise, you'd just be recreating a new variable, and there's memory issues there and stuff. We don't have to get into that. Basically, when you're creating a new variable, you include var, and when you're not, you just can use the name of it. And so when I do console.log, I can do car, and it'll print that. And I'll actually put this variable, or this console.log on two lines so that we can see both of them. So I printed car for the first line when it was Honda, then when I changed it and I printed car again, it was Ferrari. And so it's that easy to just change variables. You can just assign it with an equal sign and it's super quick. Um, but if you notice right here, I left a comment in the code. What the heck is a comment? I'm gonna tell you. So if you ever wanna make notes for yourself, like if you're not sure how this piece of code works or you're going to be giving code to someone else to edit, you might wanna make some notes for someone um, so that way they can see how it works. Or let's just say you're messing with some code but you know one part is broken, you can just comment it out. Now if you want to use a single line comment, a single line comment starts with two slashes. But if you have multiple lines of code that you want to comment out, you use slash star and then at the end star slash. So if you look at this example right here, I have the variable potato suck equals false and then I have the comment, I'm pretty sure this variable isn't right. But then later I have the bookended comment right there with it's a little bit of a statement of how can we be sure if potatoes suck, do I suck? What does everything mean? You can put anything in these comments. And again, you can put code, you can put all kinds of stuff. For example, if I were to go back over here and say, actually, I don't want a Ferrari. I do truly like my Honda. I can comment out this part right here with a multi-line comment, and then it'll just print Honda twice. Or let's just say, I do really want that Ferrari, but I don't want to ever print out that I had a Honda because that's just embarrassing. I can do a single line comment here and then hit run 
and then it'll just print Ferrari that one time. And so that's all commenting is. It doesn't actually show up anywhere in the browser. And so if you can type to your heart's content, you can even like do fun art with text if you wanted and no one will ever see it unless they look through your code, but still. Um, now there's functions and functions are a whole other set of things um, that variables can be assigned to and variables can be used in. Um, functions are reusable collections of statements. Now again, uh, everything in JavaScript that can be declared is a statement. And so let's just say I have this function right here and it's called crap alternative and then it prints out turd because turd is an alternative for crap. That's right. Anyway, um, you can call this function as many times as you want. So if I wanted to just print out crap alternative multiple times, it would just print out turd a ton of times. And so let's do a more mature example, shall we? So let's just say I want to do function and I'm going to print out the best hack ever, let's just say. Um, and if you'll notice, I have the two parentheses there. I have the word function, the name of the function, two parentheses, and then curly braces. Now, if you'll notice, there's one curly brace on the same line, and then there's a closing curly brace on the bottom line. Now, what all of this means is function declares that the next word there is going to be the name of a function. In the parentheses, that's where um, parameters will go. And I'll explain what parameters are, but we'll just leave it empty for now. And then those curly braces are whatever is inside that function. So let's just say inside this function, we're going to do console.log. And then let's see, what's the best hack you've ever seen? I've seen a lot of cool hacks. I'm going to say my life because why not? <laughs> so um, if I were to do the best hack ever, and console.log my life. If I run this, nothing actually happens because we're not actually calling this function. Now to call the function, we just type it out over here and call the best hack ever. And then you add those parentheses there. When you add parentheses to something that calls the function that says, hey, it's your turn to get in line and execute. So now that I've called the best hack ever, I can run it and it prints my life. There you go. So. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with functions, and I'll get through that right now. So functions, like I said, can accept parameters. So if you notice this one, it says say, uh, function say my name, and then there's the word name in those parentheses, and then it has console.log hi name. Um, that is a variable that you can use. And so if I did say my name Beyonce, I should have typed say my name, say my name, but that's too long. It's okay. Um, you can put that in there and then it'll print that out. So let's just say I want to do the best hack ever and I'm going to put a name in here and then in the console.log statement um, I'm going to put name plus and then I'm going to do an S right here. And actually what I'm going to do is do this little slash. You'll see what I'm talking about. Then when I hit run, oh it's missing a slash. Pick up. I'm going to start this part over. <laughs> so I'm going to erase what I typed because this thing is spazzing on me. Okay, cut. Here we are. So let's just say I go back to this best hack ever and I'm going to add a parameter name and then I'm going to add, let's just say, name plus. I'm going to start over again because <laughs> life happens. Okay, so if we go back to this best hack ever function, I'm going to put name as one of the parameters, and then I'm going to do the life of, and I'm going to put name right here. Now, if you'll notice, in this entire console.log statement, it's kind of like a variable where we have the quotes plus name. You can console.log as much as you want because it's just printing to the console whatever is in the parentheses. What we could have also done is done var oh, I don't know, statement equals, and then the life of, and then name right here. And then in here, we can just call statement. Um, there's lots of options there. This is a quick and easy way. And so when I run it, um, it says the life of undefined. So remember when I said that variables can be undefined? That's what's happening here because we didn't actually pass in a name 
uh, that's going to be used. So it does the life of undefined. That seems really deep. But uh, we actually want to do the life of a person. And so what we would do, we would put in a little string here, and let's just say the life of Cassidy. And so when I hit run, it prints the life of Cassidy instead because we're passing in the word Cassidy as a variable to that name. So the name variable equals Cassidy. When you print it out, that's what that is. Um, it can accept multiple parameters too, and variables. And so first I'll talk about variables. Let's just say I don't know what this name will be because someone hasn't logged in or something like that. I can do var poop because why not? Var poop equals Cassidy. Man, I shouldn't have done that. I just dug myself in a hole. That's okay. And then when I type poop right here, it still says the life of Cassidy because it takes in that variable. So that's pretty nice. Um, but again, function can, functions can also accept multiple parameters. And that's just a matter of adding a comma in between the parameter names um, inside those uh, parentheses. So if you'll notice, I made this function add, and it does add n1 comma n2. Those are two different numbers that you'll pass in. And then I'll do var result equals n1 plus n2, and then print out the result. And so this is the beginnings of a beautiful JavaScript calculator. So if you'll notice, when we actually call the add function, it will print 24. So I'll do a quick example really quick. Let's just do function. Instead of add, we'll do subtract. We'll create this function here. And then for the two numbers, I'll do number one and then number two. Notice that I have numbers in the variable names, but not at the beginning because that's bad. So then I'm going to do var subtraction equals number one minus number two. Semicolon at the end. If you'll notice there's not a semicolon at the end of a function declaration or the end of a function, and that's because of those curly braces right there. Um, and there's a lot of technical details behind that, but just trust me, you need a semicolon at the end of everything, but not when it comes to those function declarations. Then we're going to console.log subtraction. So later, when I call subtract, and then I do 50 minus 10, like that, and run it, it's going to print out 40. Whoa, you can get all your math homework done with this simple function, maybe. Now, um, again, functions can also accept variables, and it doesn't have to accept variables for both parameters. So let's just say I just want to subtract 10 from something. I can do var whatever equals whatever number you want. Let's just do 500 instead. And then I can stick in whatever over here, and then hit run, and it prints out 490. So that's pretty nice when you want to mix and match how you want to set things up. Um, there's also uh, another thing in functions that's the return statement. Now the return statement, let's just say you don't actually want to print anything in your functions. You want to set everything up so that way it prints later once the functions are executed. And this will happen when you have more and more in-depth functions and not just ones that are doing subtractions. Um, the return keyword returns the value to whoever is actually calling that function, and it also exits the function. So once the return keyword is hit, nothing will execute after that. Um, because it's just exiting the function right there. Um, but then it also gives the value whatever you're returning. So in this example right here, I have the add function. It takes in n1 and n2 again, it adds it together, and then instead of printing it out, it returns the result. Now in return result, notice nothing after that line will be executed, and then when I have var sum equals add 15 and 2, first of all, that's creating a variable. The variable is calling a function, and then everything that uh, is being returned in that function is assigned to that variable. So I am returning result. Result is actually going to now be sum, because var sum equals whatever that result is, because that's what's being returned. Does that make sense? I hope so. So I'll edit this subtract function over here so I can show that to you. So instead of console.log, I'm going to do return subtraction. And so whenever I run this now, uh, it notice this little arrow right here. That means it's returning it, but it's not actually printing it. 
And uh, not all consoles will be so nice to just print that for you right there. Um, but what's happening is when I call subtract, it's not actually being attached to anything. It's just being returned into the ether. So what I can do is do var uh, tomato. I really need to come up with better variable names. That's okay. So I can do var tomato equals subtract. Now if you'll notice, it's not being sent into the ether anymore. It's being contained in this beautiful ripe tomato. So later if I want to choose to print out tomato, I can do console.log tomato. And then when I choose to reveal whatever the results of tomato are, I hit run and it prints it out. So um, basically whenever you assign a function to a variable, that means that the variable gets whatever um, the function is returning and, and it's contained in that variable until you decide to release it to anything you want. And again, let's just say you wanted to construct a string. You could do var, uh, what am I going to call this, noodle. So var noodle and then I'm going to say I have and then put in our variable tomato. I have blank noodles and then print that out. And so I'm going to print console.log noodle. Now what's happening is we're calling the function subtract, assigning it to tomato, we're making a variable called noodle that's taking that value that we have for tomato, putting it in a string, and then printing that out. And so when we print that out, whoa, I have 490 noodles. That is a lot of noodles. You are going to be very full and tired. So there you go. You can do a lot with that return statement. And um, I kind of showed you this before, but you can call functions any way you want as much as you want. And so if you'll notice in this example, I have big sum that calls add um, 2 and 50 plus add of 35 and 2. So that'll actually add those two functions together, the result of those two functions together. And then I have massive sum that has um, a big add calling add again inside of it. And it's kind of nested in there. You can call functions as many times as you want and put in functions as parameters because if you'll notice in this massive sum right here um, it's taking this big add and inside each of those it's taking the return value of the add 52 and 2 and the add 3 and 7 and then it's assigning the return value of those being added together to massive sum. It's a lot of things being called in each other um, which is kind of cool and so I can show that to you right here where let's just say I have subtraction again and I want to call var massive subtract because creativity and I can call subtract of multiple things so I'm gonna call subtract of subtract and then I'm gonna do 10 and 5 and then subtract of 15 and 10. So um, we're taking subtract of 10 and 5, which is 5, and subtract of 15 and 10, which is also 5, and then those are the two values that are going that are coming out of the those two return values. Then I'm subtracting those two values from each other. So when I actually print massive subtract console.log massive subtract that should print 5 minus 5, which is 0, because it's taking the return values of those two, subtracting them from each other. Whoa, it printed 0. It worked. Yay. Um, so yeah, you could even call subtract again and again and again and call it multiple times. That's what we call recursion, and we're not going to get too much into that. But you can continue calling functions as much as you want. I could create an add function and also call it in this subtract function. I could create a function inside the subtract function and continue making it go deeper and deeper and have functions in functions. There's all kinds of options for you, um, for you to just like make all kinds of different equations and things to put together. Um, now I'm going to talk to you about conditionals. Now uh, conditionals are conditions. So it's something that you want to happen only if something is true. And so right here, I stuck a bunch of comments in there, but basically it's if some boolean, whatever is in this parentheses, um, if this boolean is true, then it'll execute whatever is in those curly braces. Otherwise, 
you're going to do something else instead. You don't have to actually include um, an else statement. If you don't want to, you could just have if something happens, do this, otherwise don't. Um, but you can totally do that. So um, this is an example that I just whipped up. And so I have the function too big, and then it takes in a number. And you've seen this before, but now we have this if statement in here. So first, it checks if num is greater than 100. And so if the number is greater than 100, you say that number is too big, and you're just returning it. Um, you could also have a console.log statement in there. You could call another function, all kinds of stuff. Else, if, and so you're also doing otherwise, we want to move on to this next statement. If the number is equal to 50, um, then you could say that number is nice. We're happy with that. Um, otherwise, uh, else at the end, that number is too small. And um, you could do a lot, of, a lot of different kinds of conditionals. And I'll uh, do a quick example over here. And so let's just say um, we want to have this subtraction in this subtract function, but what if the number two is greater than the number one? Then we'll have a negative number. We don't want to have a negative number because that would just be crazy. I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is add an if statement and then do if number two is greater than number one, then we're not actually going to return anything. We're just going to do console.log and we're just going to warn our users and say, yo, you're going to get a negative number. Right in there, because they should be warned. So, if that happens, it's going to execute that console.log, but then it'll continue going because we didn't actually return anything. Remember, return exits a function. So if I still print console.log and then call this function, so subtract, and then I'm going to subtract 10 and 30. So I'll run it and it'll say, oh man, you're going to get a negative number, but then it prints negative 20 anyway. So it warned us. But let's just say you know what, no, I don't want any negative numbers at all. I'm going to say, try again. I'm going to say try again, and then I'm just going to type return. Because then if I type return, that's going to exit the function, and it's not returning anything. And so if I run that again, it'll say try again, and then undefined, because we're returning nothing. Now we could have returned something like, this sucks or something like that. You could return a string, you could return the number zero, you could return whatever you want, but return breaks out of that function. Now, uh, let's just say we only want negative numbers. You could just reverse this, um, and it's just greater than or equals to, and you can do that, that's fine. Let's just say you want to check if things are uh, the same. Um, then, let's just say, what if number one is equal to number two? Now, normally you would think you'd just put an equal sign, but that's actually not correct. Now, there's a lot of reasons for these equal signs. Now, when you just have the one equal sign, that's an assignment. And that means you're assigning one variable to another. Um, but we don't want to do that because we don't want to assign number one to number two, or number two to number one. So we can do equals equals, and that checks the value of both of those uh, variables and makes sure that they're the same. Now, what if someone actually put in a number and a string, and uh, it's not actually right? Um, then, like, it's a number and a string, and you can't actually subtract strings from numbers. Are you kidding me? Um, we don't want that either. And so that's when you do equals, 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 which compares the value and the type. Now, I just kind of threw a lot at you. But basically, when you're trying to compare two numbers or two strings or two booleans or whatever, use equals, equals, equals. Use the three of those the three equals. Because when you use those, it compares the values and it compares the types and it makes sure that they're the same. And so if number one is equal to number two, then we're going to just not even bother with the subtraction. We're just going to return zero because that's what it would return anyway if those two were the same. Um, and then let's just say else and uh, if um, instead those two aren't the same, we can put everything inside this else statement and it would do that. Now we don't actually need the else in this case, we could just have those at the end because again, if that return statement was hit, nothing would execute afterwards, um, but you can stick that else in there and it would be just fine. 
And so if I hit run, it's printing negative 20 because we still have the 10 and 30. But if I print the 30 right there, 30 and 30, it prints out zero. Um, and again, we could have this print out a string instead where it says, oh no, I don't know, something like that. Then it'll print, oh no, because 30 and 30 are the same. Now, you can have certain functions called if a condition is met. You could have, like, instead of that, we're going to call function add, and we're going to add the numbers together instead, number one and number two. Um, you could do all kinds of stuff like that uh, and combine all these different things and manipulate your pages that way, but um, we're not going to get into that right now. This is just the basics to understand how you can uh, structure all your pages. Um, so using all of these different bits of information, you can conquer anything with JavaScript. Because once you understand how to actually structure everything, now it's just a matter of getting the information that you want. So if you wanted to say, hey, I want to get the name on a page, or I want to access this picture or this button or different things like that. There's all kinds of functions out there um, in the browser that you can use where you can just say I want to get this div and I'm going to edit it with JavaScript and then return it to be something different. There's all kinds of different options for you. I'm not going to explain all of those because this was just about JavaScript not about all the uses of JavaScript but it's very easy to learn and there's a lot of resources out there. So. I highly recommend developer.mozilla.org that has tons of tutorials on JavaScript and explains all kinds of stuff that you can do with it and shows you how you can get those different elements on your web page. There's also w3schools.com that explains a lot of it as well, um, very similar to the previous one. Um, definitely check out GitHub. Honestly, you could search for almost anything on GitHub, click JavaScript, and just see how people are executing their code. Um, or you could go to Stack Overflow. So as you're putting together your websites and trying to add different functionality here and there, you can ask all kinds of questions on there and they'll be able to help you out a ton. Um, or you can reach out to me. Um, my website is casadu.co and then my GitHub is github.com slash casadu and uh, you can reach out to me on those platforms on Twitter like I mentioned before and I will answer all of your questions because I'm very excited to help you. Um, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of Local Hack Day and have a good one.